This is the Four Man Rush. Hello, Panther fans, and welcome to another podcast of the Four Man Rush. I'm your host, Timmy Vio, here with my man Kevin of the Four Man Rush. Um, we might have Jadarius popping in on here. We'll, we'll see, hopefully. The uh, rest of the crew's doing their JLB tonight, so uh, we're here to bring you uh, the lowdown on what's getting ready to go down in Bank of America Stadium on Sunday against the old Detroit Lions. Yeah, man. We'll see, we'll see if we can get a W out of this or not. Who knows? Um, but one thing we, we would like to see is more growth. <laughs> we'd like to see more growth. Um, believe it or not, we'd like to see more growth from, from our veterans. Go figure. Anyway. Um, any, yeah. Yeah. So um, we'll briefly talk about Tampa Bay. Briefly. Not much to talk about, but briefly. And then we'll dive into uh, the uh, Detroit Lions, of course. Um, so, hold on to you for hats, uh, Panther fans. Damn it. Welcome. Glad you're back. Um, and, uh, <laughs> it's been a frustrating season. It's okay, though. We saw it coming. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Kevin, would you kindly, uh, give us your thoughts on the Tampa Bay game? Um, try, try not to go, go too hard on them, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as the Tampa Bay game goes, um, Great first quarter by the Panthers. Uh, ended up turning to a good, solid first half, 17-17. And, you know, you felt optimistic, like, okay, you know, they we was counted to get blowed out. Everybody picked Tampa, and here we are tied up at half. And true to form, we came out in the second half, and whatever this team has against scoring in the third quarter <laughs> – <laughs> it pretty much rid his ugly head. I mean, it's, um, it's our second half scoring in particular has been pretty, uh, pretty anemic lately. It seems like, you know, we start off well and good or, or we uh, we'll play good in stretches, but it's, it's, it's like we play 45 minutes of good ball and that 15 minutes we don't, this just seems to be enough to, allow our opponents to put up enough that makes it difficult for us to overcome. Um, You know, this game was, you know, pretty much a game that first quarter, you know, hey, um, we had three drives. We was able to put up – we had a three and out, and then our next two were touchdowns. Um, Tampa was able to respond back 14-7. Feeling like, okay, all right, we came to play today. Uh, Second quarter – uh, all we got was a field goal out of it. Tampa was able to put up 10. That's how we got to score 17-17. Uh, you just pretty much saw that uh, this team just, you know, came out, seemed like they had a game plan and, you know, missed some missed some chances and, and had some some self-inflicted. Not too much. You know, normally, you know, last game we had 12 penalties. This game we only had mm-hmm. five penalties for 40 yards. So mm-hmm. um, trending in the right direction. Um, but – you know, like I said, that anemic third quarter, uh, we just wasn't, we just was not able to um, put anything together. And we, we, we just, quite frankly, this defense is doing what it does best, not forcing punts. Um, at the Tampa fumbled their first drive, Tim, they end up scoring on the next nine possessions. Their 11th and final possession, of course, was a kneel down. So <laughs> they pretty much just, had their way with us offensively after they after we forced that after Shaq Thompson forced that fumble um, in the first quarter. Um, and and of those nine scoring drives, six of those drives were at least seventy yards or more. Yeah, so that's no that's, so that would explain why the time of possession was greatly in their favor. Thirty six minutes to our twenty four. Amazing. Whew. These total yards are going to hurt you, Tim. Tampa had 544 total yards. Panthers had 187. Total? Total. Yeah. First downs, Tampa had 30. Carolina had 13. 
Um, they got their one turnover out the way early and then took over. I won turnover came when we was trying to um, get back in the game and just it just pretty much caused a second half avalanche that we just uh, we just couldn't fight through at all whatsoever. Okay. Um, did get a little bit of hope, you know, heading into the fourth. You know, when we got that great kickoff return by um, uh, Trent Cannon that you know set us up. That should have been a uh, there should have been a um, touchdown on that had uh, Sam Franklin got one more block. Yeah. But uh, it was good to see, you know, the undrafted free agent out of Virginia State, um, you know, make his first huge impact play um, in an NFL game. Um, you know, and once we scored that touchdown, that, uh, you know, that brought us back within, you know, within, you know, two scores. Like, okay, come on, let's, you know, let's go. Let's, 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 let's fucking go. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they came right back after that, and with the ball on their own two yard line, <laughs> they used the exact same play, exact same formation they used the last game, and they trucked off a ninety eight yard run, pretty much right up the middle, shaded off to the left side. That are uh, mm-hmm. that just pretty much just sucked all the air. I mean, you could just feel at home that. The, the whatever fight that we was trying to muster up to hang in there, it, it was just it was just gone. Oh. You know, we saw players on the sideline like Brian Burns, Shaq Thompson trying to, you know, tell the team to keep fighting, but you could just see after that, you know, it was just like total dejection. The team didn't quit. I'm not gonna say they threw the towel, but you can nah. just tell, you know, because that's one thing I said about this team. There's there's definitely no quit, but you can just see the the look on their faces like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> Um, yeah, um, Trey Boston, you know, tackling, grabbing at ankles again. I mean, my God, is my that God. Boy. Yeah, boy. Um, ro- you know, rookie mistakes, really. Uh, Matt Rule said they had a slant on. You took Rose Matters was in the C gap, was supposed to went to B gap. He didn't make it. Um, Tahir Whitehead was lined up in the wrong B gap. He was lined on the play side B gap, B gap instead of back side. Mm-hmm. So, once you took gross models, wasn't able to get his stunt. There was nobody there to have his back. Nobody. 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 You know, like he sweat nobody. Mm. <laughs> so they got, I think it was the guard chipped on the help. Did he, the guard help chip on um, gross models and then went to the second level and yep. got the safety. Yep. And he got him was... a two for one. Yep. <laughs> and got one safety. And the other safety was, of course, Trey Boston. Last line of the fence. <laughs> so. Man, Shut up. What, what size are those shoes right there? What size are those shoes? <laughs> diving in, ankle diving ass. Act like yeah. you work at foot action. Yo, his nickname ought to be Submarine the way he be diving. <laughs> <laughs> For real, man. For real. Dive, dive. <laughs> Tim, using the name, you know, a little something about yeah. that submarine action. Yeah. Dive, dive. <laughs> 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 Telescope up? No, I'm just joking. Oh, Boston man. off the port bow. But anyway. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> but, yeah, so that just pretty much um, – yeah, that just pretty much did it. Uh, this was really the first – this was really the first game of the season. We just got our back blown out. Um, true. You know, that offensively, it was just uh, – after that first quarter, it was pretty much uh, – Pretty much an epic struggle that Tampa Bay defense is one of the top five for a reason. It is. Um, Extremely stout run defense. You know, they they limited whatever yet we could because Teddy was 18 to 24, sacrificing he only had six incompletions, but only was able to net 136 yards. Uh, Like I say, the two touchdowns he got was in the first quarter, but uh, after that, it was uh, was pretty much anemic. Uh, Mike Davis, who took over for – Injured Christian McCaffrey, um, mm-hmm. seven carries, 32 yards. Uh, decent average, but, you know, not enough totes. Um, DJ Moore, he had the big touchdown played in the first quarter, got mm-hmm. most of his yards. Mm-hmm. Uh, but after that, man, it was just, uh, it was you know, pretty much slim pickings. Um, mm-hmm. You know, um, um, what's his name? Uh, Robbie Anderson. Um, he only he had oh, six man. targets for four catches, twenty-one yards. Uh, his longest catch was nine yards. So, whatever they did to limit him, that 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 worked. Uh, Curtis Samuel, three catches on five targets for eight yards. 
Yeah. So that's that our guy. Pretty, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's our guy. Right. So no. uh yeah, so um put all that together and that's how you get curbs on forty six twenty three. They uh mm. they doubled up on us. They they doubled the score. So they, they do. Yeah, so yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about the uh, about the cane. <laughs> yeah. I mean I, I don't I don't there's not much more to say about that, bro. I mean I, <laughs> it is what it is, folks. <sighs> yeah. It is what it is. Re I mean, this is a rebuild. It is what it is. I mean, are, are the leadership there? Were, I I didn't realize there was such a such a gap in the leadership um, until now. You know, mm -hmm. in, in, in terms of you know coming out in the second half and having that having that cohesiveness as a, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Man, Luke Luke leaving, bro. I, I mean, TD leaving is one thing, but when Luke left, I mean, it, wow. And, and we don't have the veteran leadership out of him and. You know, even even having you know KK and um, uh, Mario and it's it's just a it's just completely different. It's completely different. Yeah, that energy definitely hitting different now. Um, it really is. You know, we're gonna have to start from scratch. You know, organic, homegrown energy. I mean, yep. you know, when you hit the reset button on the whole damn thing, this 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 is what comes with it. Yep, yep, that's exactly right. Exactly right, and we you know we'll have a chance to see that. Hopefully, to see that rebound on Sunday against the uh, Detroit Lions uh, as they as they come down to the old B of A. Um, mm -hmm. are the, how many fans are these? Are they, are they still allowing in the stadium? Do you know? Still at seven percent, so about fifty three hundred fans. Um, that's it. You know, with the with this pandemic, I mean, who knows if that might change? You know, with the numbers going up. Mm -hmm. um, but currently, um, about 5,300 fans are going to be allowed. That's the 7% rule for a uh, 75,000 uh, seat uh, stadium. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. You know, are you making this one or? Oh, no. No, I'll, uh, um, I'll be right in front of the good old two with the rest of you guys. Um, Smart you know, man. I got my one freebie, you know, uh, part of, um, you know, winning the uh, contest, keep the streak alive. But mm -hmm. uh, Outside of that, nah, I'm not. I'm not paying 170 and up to go to any games. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> that part. 170 out of money. Um. So Detroit, and folks. I mean, <laughs> if you look at what's been ailing us, um, it's a uh, quarterbacks that 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 have uh, that don't play games. All right. I don't know what it is about us drawing uh, up our uh, schedule this year, but every, every single week we've had a quarterback that can get it done going up against our defense. And, um, you know, this, Matthew Stafford is not um, is, is not somebody who's outside of that realm. The, the, the guy can play. If you look at what he did to Washington last week, surgical, three touchdowns, they had over 300 yards passing. I think he only had four incompletions, something like that. Matt, he's he's playing ball. He's he's gritty. We know that. We played Detroit before. Uh, Matthew Stafford can move that team down down the field, man. Um, and if if we're not gonna have Teddy, which I don't think we are, um, it's it's gonna be interesting. We're, we're gonna have to rely on Mike Davis a little more. We're gonna have to rely on that running game more. I, I, mm, what you think, Kev? I mean, what? We'll we'll start we'll start with um what we need to do on offense and then we'll go to to the defensive side of the side of football and see see how we match up against Detroit's offense um and go from, from that angle but um we're, first and foremost who who's going to be our starting QB well um I think that rule is trying to hold out some optimism that maybe. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater can play. He was saying um, his there was no structural damage, just some swelling and some bruising. So I would anticipate them uh, trying to maximize always, you know, with caution, the efforts to, uh, to get him feeling comfortable. Mm -hmm. Me personally, even though this is not the knee that he uh, had the devastating injury on, I, I would feel – I would feel I, – I wouldn't – it wouldn't bother me if he missed this game. 
Not at all. Uh, you know, you've been in the medical profession yourself, MCL sprains. Uh, what little knowledge I, I was able to read up on uh, prior to coming on is it could typically to fully heal. It can be anywhere between two to six weeks mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for it to heal. I know that uh, we got a bye week coming up, if not uh, the game after this game. So, you know, maybe that'll, you know, give them time to fully heal. But, uh, you know, P.J. Walker, you know, next man up. Uh, I think Will Greer would likely be uh, activated if uh, they decide to sit out Teddy. Mm -hmm. uh, he'll be the backup. And uh, we signed the guy from the Saints practice squad to our practice squad. Yep. Um, I think his name was, uh, was it Tommy Stevens, if I'm not mistaken? I think so. I believe that was his name. Oddly enough, they've been having him on a practice squad as a tight end. Because he is kind of a versatile playmaker, but wow, right, he, really, yeah. But That's he's crazy. actually, uh, yeah. But he actually played quarterback. I believe he's at what Penn State, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. Um, I couldn't, um, I couldn't pull up the uh, numbers here, but, but yeah, that's the potential of our quarterback um, situation here. Yeah, Tommy um, Stevens. Tommy Stevens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, that's 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 what we're likely looking at. So the hope is uh, enough treatment throughout the week will have Teddy Bridgewater feeling fine and confident enough to want to play. I, I know he'll want to play, but again, you know, knees. You know, this offense line is not exactly the best. Um, uh, even though Detroit's not doesn't have any quote ferocious defenders like that per se, but still, at the end of the day. You know, you always want to, you know, err on the side of caution. Um, like I said, we're three or seven. We're in a rebuild. Um, it's not like we're seven and three and fighting for playoff positioning. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? You know, <laughs> I'd be stressed the hell out right now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so again, if we're going to do a full evaluation of players and talent, let's um, let's give let's give PJ Walker a full game to practice and get ready for. Um, you know, until. You know, Teddy is 100% where he can play. Um, why not? Let's 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 take a look because, you know, knock on wood, um, you know, mm -hmm. Teddy recovers, but there's some other potential injury where he missed. We need to see on film, you know, what uh, what PJ can do for us. You know, he's on a two year contract, so hey, let's let's use this as fans to evaluate to see how he does with live bullets um, in an NFL regular season game, which he has not done. Well, I mean, he's done in a few spots yeah, um, yeah, here, but as far as like a full regular season NFL game from start to finish, he's he's never done that. Right. Yeah, so, but yeah, that's what the uh, quarterback situation looking like coming up uh, Sunday for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to rely on Mike and um, the uh, the gentleman, the, uh, the the safety slash running back. Um, he had he had a couple good carries against Tampa. Uh, he's not afraid to hit the gap neither. Uh, this is a pretty good job with that. Um, what? Talking about Hartsfield? Yeah, yeah, that's his name. Oh, I didn't know he. Uh, I didn't know he got a, any carries. Um, I know that we had that running back that we just picked up. Um, oh, was it? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that was I'm him. Sorry. Yeah, Rodney Smith. That was him. Smith. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, he had a he had a ten yard run. He had three carries for thirteen yards. One of them was for ten yards. Um. Hey, you know, talking about running back, depending on what happens with Mike Davis and his thumb, mm -hmm. uh, don't be surprised if Curtis Sammy don't, <laughs> you know, get a nice dose of um, of carries here. Yep. And uh, after that kickoff return, I wouldn't mind seeing Cannon get some running back reps. I mean, he need to do something. Hey, man. Hey, you you saw when he gets out in the open, it's you know that that speed hit different, man. He was pulling away for some folks, you know. Shoot. Um, Shoot. he ran hey. with authority, man. I was digging that. Don't yeah, definitely, you know, but yeah, hey, let's, like I said, we're going to evaluate, let's evaluate everybody. We need to know. We need to yeah. know what we're dealing with. So we, yeah. We can be accurate in the draft and in the free agency. That's for damn sure. Exactly. Um, we don't need guesses. We need actual film work that we're looking at. Say a word. Say a word. <laughs> um, now I, we have a. As you mentioned, as you mentioned uh, already, we we haven't seen much of a uh, of PJ, and um, I wish I, I wish I knew more about his chemistry with, um, you know, you know, getting those uh, uh, first team reps and things of that nature. What his chemistry is like with um, DJ and uh, Robbie, um, 
I would feel a little more comfortable about that because it, it seemed like it, it seemed like um, you know just going off the of last game uh, with Detroit playing the Redskins. Uh, we mentioned that you know before we started recording, uh, uh, Alex Smith had 55 passing attempts in that game, um, and you know it, it wasn't it wasn't a blowout kind of game. I mean it was a basically a close game. Well, Will, will we will we need to pass the ball like that, and can we get off with the run game? Because as you mentioned, Detroit's not that good of a run defense. So I mean, it's just it's just all tying together in my mind. Because I know PJ is, is athletic and he can get out and get out of the pocket, things of that nature. If he can if he can show that chemistry um, with DJ and Robbie, I I, I think we we'll, we'll have a, uh, a a successful offense outing. Defensive outing, I, I do not know. <laughs> I do not know. I wish I did. Oh man. Um, to, uh, do you want you want to talk about the defense uh, and how we could stop Stafford, um, Kevin? Yeah. Before we get to that, just give you a little background. Actually, PJ Walker and Robbie Anderson got some history in college. Uh, oh, they both played together. Uh, they both played together at Temple. Um, you know, PJ, That's he nice. was the. Uh, he was the four-year starter there for Temple, and Matt Rue got started from 2013 to 2016. Mm-hmm. And uh, Robbie played uh, 2013. I think he missed 2014 with the injury. Came back uh, 2015, and um, but man, when he played, he was hell. Uh, 2013 um, with PJ as his uh, quarterback, uh, he had 44 receptions, 791 yards, nine touchdowns. Um, that was uh, that was when they both when they both were freshmen. Then in their mm. junior years in 2015, uh, Robbie had 70 catches, 939 yards, uh, and seven touchdowns. So, mm. yeah, when they um, yeah, so they they definitely got you know history as far as uh, playing together back in college um, here, and so uh, I I think that uh, it wouldn't be nothing too out of the way for them to you know build that rapport and that chemistry again um, mm. if needed. So. Yeah, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, yeah, I just wanted to share that with because I knew they both played at Temp. I just want to make sure it was during the same time. Absolutely, I mean it makes me feel better. I know there's some fans out there who, who were thinking that too. You know, but heck, heck yeah, that's that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 great news actually. Cool. All oh, right. but as far as the, the other part we were talking about about um, uh, defensively, what we can do about you know Matt Stafford. Mm-hmm. Uh, well. Uh, what I was looking up here was, believe it or not, um, with Matthew Stafford, uh, he has uh, – this came out a couple hours ago. It says – and this is from Tom Pelissero on Twitter. He says, Lions quarterback Matthew Stafford has a partial tear in a ligament in the thumb on his throwing hand per sur- mm. sources. They'll take, it, they'll take the week to see how he throws the ball, but Stafford is tough as they come. And the expectation is he starts Sunday against the Panthers. So that's the wow. uh, that's the expectations um, here. Now uh, I did have a chance to uh, look up another article written today about it. It says, mm-hmm. uh, and this is from someone in Detroit media. It says Detroit Lions Matthew Stafford played through hand injuries before, and it has not been pretty. Uh oh. Yeah. Uh-oh. So they're basically giving a. Uh, a throwback of, you know, during his 12 years that he's been there. Um, it says in the 19 quarters that he's played with an injury, Stafford's threw five interceptions, uh, most of them while wearing a fingerless glove to help grip the ball mm. uh, here. So he, he's, you know, when this throwing hand is injured, he seems to, and he tries to play to it, he just seems to give out gifts, <laughs> you know. So this uh, secondary who um, – you know, have the nerve to want to use Steve's Avenue, even though they haven't earned it yet. <laughs> uh, you know, this 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 might Avenue. be the opportunity to, uh, you know, um, knock the dust off and um, it's more like a dirt road. Sheesh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> hey, Tim, more like Omaha Beach. Full <laughs> 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 out disaster. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, but um, but yeah, as far as uh, as far as defensively, um, you know, as far as what the Panthers can do, I, I believe that I believe that you know the chances are there for the uh, Panthers because I think they got some offensive linemen who are um, they're playing with some backup offensive linemen. Um, can we take advantage of that? 
you know, particularly with Brian Burns, you know, that's, that's pretty much seems to be the key. Um, as always with us, um, hopefully you tear gross models with, uh, with this being his, um, third game back, um, you know, he'll have the opportunity to get his wind up and, uh, I'm sure he would like to redeem himself after, you know, giving up that 98 yard against Tampa. So God, I love God. to see how, how he comes out and performs and bounce back. Uh, but this game is, is, is ripe for our offensive line to take over, uh, Detroit. They, uh, they're pretty balanced off. Well, they're, they, they tend to lean towards the pass 38 passes a game, 24 runs, hmm. um, so they look to do most of their damage through the through the air, but uh, they they smell blood against the run, which you know they could probably they probably will test us. Um, that is something they would do. Uh, their running backs are and is um rookie uh, DeAndre Swift out of Georgia, and the goat you know one of himself Adrian Peterson still yeah. around, and um, someone they drafted uh, just a couple years ago out of uh, Auburn, Carry On Johnson. Um, you know, so they got a, they, they do run it back by committee, mm -hmm. um, you know, d does Detroit. So, um, you know, the, uh, the threat's going to be in the passing game, even though they are missing a couple of wide receivers, but, mm -hmm. um, we've shown that, you know, if, if a team has got two decent wide receivers going on and, and the Lions still do that, that could definitely pose a, a problem, you know, for us with our Ben and, Almost broken philosophy. <laughs> I'm not gonna say <laughs> bend, but don't break. You know, but bend and try to, you know, hold on by scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> Some chewing gum. Yeah, because as we saw, you know, it's, I don't know if rule and I'm being silly here. Heard the cries of the fans. Why we do so much zone? Why we don't play more man and blitz? Well, the times we did that against the game Sunday, I don't know mm. against Miss Tom Brady, we got our boots smoked. Man, boy, did we. I mean, she's particularly on third down. I mean, well, we get smoked on third down anyway, so I don't know yeah, it being third true. down. But, um, yeah, the touchdown that was given up to the tight end um, for the uh, bus was man coverage. Um, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, t yeah, two of the touchdowns. That was given up was on man coverage. Uh, several plays on third down, man coverage. For freaking states, we had a third and 19, a check down to a tight end, picked up a first down. First down. I mean. <sighs> yeah. And by the way, we want a historically pace for uh, being horrible at third down right now. Uh, teams are averaging 55% first down conversion against the Panthers on third down. Um the next lowest is second is only 38%. So we're clearly. Wow. Yeah. Huge discrepancy between first and second with, uh, with the uh, converting the number of the percentage of first downs being converted mm. on third down. 17 um, point differential people. Yeah. 17 percentage points to the next. Wow. dude. And not to mention, you know, I, I don't know if you saw my tweet on Twitter, but. In ten games, we've only forced twenty-four punts. Oh yeah, only two punts forced in the last four games. Two punts in the last four games. I mean, it's getting to the point now. Teams may start considering deactivating their punter, and you know, you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, just adding an additional, you know, another, another right. receiver, <laughs> receiver, running back, extra DB, something. Man, it's just they're they gonna eat. <laughs> They just bring it, bring in somebody out the practice squad so we can we can evaluate talent. Get out there, right? Right. You don't need to punt no damn ball. Punt? What's that? Never heard of it. <laughs> For what? For what? We don't need to punt the ball. Yeah. Man. So that's uh. So yeah, that's where we can um, uh, be able to take advantage of um, you know, as far as a uh, far as the um, our defense on the offense is um, uh, just get after that offensive line. Yeah. Is um uh, is uh, what I feel because I don't know how many times has uh Stafford been uh Matthew Stafford been sat. Let me. I think it's thir They have thirteen sacks. If I'm not mistaken. So far this season, let me see. I believe so. All right, let me go to ProFootballReference.com real quick. Let's see what they got to say. Yeah, yeah NFL.com has it listed as thirteen sacks. 
Yeah, the average the average is seven point seven pass passing uh, passing yards per uh, per attempt. Uh, well, Pro Football Reference got him at twenty two sacks. Oh, so it's been updated. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah, twenty two. Uh, he's got twenty two sacks. Um, seventeen touchdowns, seven interceptions. Mm-hmm. Um, he's got he got three game winning drives. So, you know, with our attention to being close, we well, we need to be the one to, uh, that had the ball last. Hopefully, going in victory uh, formation here. Mm-hmm. Um, his uh, completion is right around his you know career average of sixty two percent. He's at uh, about sixty four. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, Stafford doing Stafford things, but again, you know, we'll see how that um, how that uh, ligament damage to the thumb on his throwing hand, how that could play a factor, um, you know, with his ability to pass and throw the ball. Um, like the report said, he's gutsy. He's going to try to play through it. So, you know, we'll see. You know, this could, you know, depending on how it goes, this could be a battle of the backup quarterbacks. <laughs> could be. <laughs> like for real. Hey, you never know. Which, so. means, which means it's going to be a defensive game. <laughs> oh, boy. And... Um, Defense, these two teams, whew, what's that? <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. If Shaq has another game like he did last Sunday, you know, that might help. But he, came, he came to play ball. Uh, I just wish to hear or get his head out of his ass. But, yeah, whatever. I, I just wanted to get his head in the right gap, man. That That's just, like, disturbing me. Like, bro, like, it's three other people – on this side of the ball, why are you coming over there? Uh, and you and, and and when the ball is snapped, you're not even looking where the running play is. Like, no, that's what is that's what's annoying my soul. I wish I could just show that video right now. It, it, what he did, he just stood behind whoever the D tackle was or the D N. He just stood there and like and danced. You know, he didn't. There was no lateral movement whatsoever. He just where'd the ball go? By that time, my man's off to the races. He has no angle. What's the way? I mean, it's just wow, dude. And this man's been in the league for almost ten years. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a nine year veteran. And ten is the crazy part. We we knew coming in he wasn't great at pass coverage, right? But he was a thumper in the run game. I mean, that was his resume. So I figured if nothing else, you know, we got an enforcer. Mm-hmm. So, but our uh, thank God this is a one year deal, two point three million. Hey, mm-hmm. you know, Got your your, yeah, your, uh, yeah, your, your temple affiliation with rule is no longer needed. So I'm going to, I'm going to, yeah, exactly. I wonder if Matt wants to give him those right there. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think coach rules about boy, if he, if he could, I don't know. I think he pulled a trigger on, on to here too, man. I don't, whew. I'm just man, saying, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Um, so, um, 1 o'clock Sunday, ladies and gentlemen, Carolina Panthers versus the Detroit Lions. Uh, be sure to tune in. Um, these, these these guys are still growing when we have quite a few rookies on this team. Um, and, you know, when when the chips are down, you know, i.e., when, you, when, you, when you're missing your starting quarterback, you're missing your starting running back, you lost one of your best defensive tackles, all these other things going on with the team, it's a, it's a prime opportunity to see what this coaching staff can do. And, uh, you know, if we can bounce back after that thump and we got in our own house, um, and, you know, even after, you know, after Shaq's, Shaq's speech in the locker room and, you know, people were really calling folks out, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Did, did, you hear what, did you hear what Shaq said, Kevin? Well, I heard it was uh... – you know, he was cussing. <laughs> you know, all I heard he was, uh, um, um, you know, he's cussing, you know, cussing them out. And Matt Rule said, hey, you know, at that moment, yeah, it was definitely needed. Yeah. Um, he said that was pre- preferably not his style. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, because he, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said, but at that moment, yeah, that was definitely needed coming from a player, but as a coach, you know, he just has a little bit different way of uh, <laughs> of dealing with it. So, hey, you know. 
Yeah, when Shaq was hot. When Shaq was hot. He, he left the field hot, got to the locker room hot. He was hot. Um, and, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it was all smoke or not. We'll see. Yeah, but Shaq, Shaq did mention that, you know, what he expected out of co- coming out of that out of that confrontation situation, however you want to, you know, label it, uh, was that, you know, he, he knows his teammates are going to show up and go to work and practice. So, again, we'll, we'll see if this translates to the field um, or, you know, if it's just smoke and mirrors and, you know, the veterans just don't want to, you know, bring it. Because, I mean, I'm not expecting the rookies to play like, you know, five, six, eight, ten-year veterans. I'm, I'm not going to do that. That's, that's ridiculous. But I am going to ex- expect those veterans to step up, especially somebody who's been, who's been you know, groomed by the best in, in, in Shaq. So, um, yeah. One o'clock Sunday, folks. The Carolina Panthers are back on the field, man. I, I think we might pull out a win, Kevin. What do you think? Yeah, I definitely think it's uh, it's definitely one of our um, more favorable. I don't know necessarily we should be favorites, you know, with a five game <laughs> losing streak, but uh, it's 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 it's, uh, it's uh, the degree of difficulty is lessened from what we, um, you know, what we've been through on this street because you know we went with the uh, started off with the the loose street started off with the what five and one bears. Yeah. And after watching how Foles played last night, I was like, how in the world did we lose to this guy? How indeed. Yeah, and then, man, it's just been um, one loss out there. We lost to the Bears. Then we uh, we lost to the Saints. Lost to the Falcons again. And, and, and just, man, uh, yeah. Yeah, that Bears game. I think that was that that defensive line for the Bears was just so dominating. I I, for, I forgot about that. It was just so dominating. I, I think this this Detroit team might be an actually might be a defensive line we we might be able to tame a little bit. Maybe if we can run the football, we can we can we can keep them off balance. But if all we have to do if, if all we can do is drop back and pass the ball, we're gonna be in trouble. But yeah. We'll see, man. We'll see. Um, you wanna give a score prediction, Kev? Huh. <laughs> uh, I I say I'm go ahead and just put it out there. I I, I say I, I say uh twenty twenty eight twenty one Panthers. I, I, I think I think if, I think Matthew might have a bad thumb, but we have a really bad secondary. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which which is it. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the it's the the pickings are there. I mean, the Lions' run defense gives up the second most rushing yards uh, in the NFL. Um, uh, they're allowing nearly two rushing touchdowns a game. Um, and, you know they they give up of their nine games six games they giving up multiple touchdown passes so I mean if this is ever a game to you know pump some life back into this offense to get their mojo back this this defense is definitely definitely uh, the one that you uh, that you need so it's you know their their formula has been you know kind of something out has been but don't break and hope the offense puts up just enough points to to uh, to be relevant but. Um, yeah, if it, yeah, this is definitely a game that we need to um, pl- uh, to play to stop the bleeding. Because after this, we're at Minnesota, who's starting to get their swag back again. Um, you know, they didn't want two in a row. They 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 beat the Packers at Green Bay, and then they wow. won at Chicago. Wow. Yeah. So. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah. And at one point, you know, Minnesota was, um, you know, there's time I possibly, you know, rumblings of. Find Mike Zimmer. I think they were like one and four at one point, but they've uh, they're now four and five. So I mean, they're trying to, yeah, you know, get some relevance because I think they got Dallas this week and then at and then they got us. So I mean, Mm -hmm. hey, uh, you know, they getting they getting their momentum, they getting their swag, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, we uh, we we definitely need this. (laughs) 
Come on, Panthers. Yeah. I got faith in you, man. I got faith in you. I, I, I think I think we can pull this out. We we sorely need this. God am I, we need this W. Uh, man. Well, Panther fans, uh, we're going into another week of Carolina Panther football and uh, another chance to break this losing streak. I'm just glad we broke the one from last year. <laughs> I'm glad that's over. We've got a couple W's under our belt. We're good. All right. So, uh, Kev, any uh, parting shots, sir? As always, just thank the fans of the Four Man Rush for supporting us on all of our platforms. Uh, keep looking us for, for us post game. You know, a couple hours after the game is over, every uh, every game day, and uh, uh, follow us on the All Twenty Two um, that we do every Wednesday around nine thirty. And um, let's uh, let's get through this rebuild year one together. Indeed, indeed. And on behalf of myself and the rest of the. Uh, crew the four man rush man we really appreciate you guys uh, and gals we really appreciate y'all um and just to reiterate as kevin said you know catch up catch up with us on our social media platforms or on all the major ones uh facebook twitter instagram youtube obviously and um tell your friends tell your uh, tell your roommates tell your you know co-workers whatever the four man rush is the the premier, the premier carrier of, of Carolina Panther knowledge and entertainment for that matter. So check it out. Check it out. Um, folks, COVID's still out there. Stop playing games. If you haven't noticed and, you know, across the nation, we've had a, a huge spike. Um, so, you know, do your part. Do your part. There's some families out there are suffering because they're losing loved ones left and right, man. Do your part. Wash your hands. Keep a mask on. And uh, let's, let's let's get through this. Let's get through this. Cool, cool. All right. All right, folks. You guys have a great morning, afternoon, evening, or whenever you listen to this podcast. Um, drive safe. Try not to step in your dog poop when you walk your dogs in the morning. And as always... Keep pounding. <laughs> Y'all have a good one. And that's the clear. Damn it. Huh. She love it. We are in public and we can just chill with my partners and we can go back to my crib and just chill out the covers and do we call me and you love us. The Foreman Rush is brought to you by the love and respect of and for the Carolina Panthers and Carolina Panther fans everywhere. Keep pounding. The Four Men Rush is a non-affiliate of the Carolina Panther organization. All thoughts, assessments, and content of this podcast is directly related to the Four Men Rush exclusively. Thank you.